Advanced Studio Classroom is on the air. Join us today as we continue talking about the astro tourism trend. Hello, listeners. Welcome back to another Advanced Studio Classroom. I'm Simon, and you're joining me in the studio for our second day of the July Space Article. The lesson is called Stargazing Tourism Trend. Stargazing Destinations Lure Astro Tourists to the Night Sky. And we, of course, are on the second day of this lesson. So joining me again today in the studio, I have two panelists. David Morton, welcome back. Hello, hello. So good to be back. Now, David, when we were discussing this article yesterday, we talked about this problem that has become new in the last hundred years or so. Can you tell us what is this problem? That problem is called light pollution or sky glow. Mm. And it has to do with just so many artificial lights from cities and also dust particles and water vapor, which make it the sky very bright from light reflecting off of things and makes it hard for us to see the stars. So we are no longer in many places on the earth able to see the night sky the way we once did. And as a result of that, uh, we have a, a new trend. And I'm hoping that Manya. Welcome back to the show. You're our second panelist today. Thank you, Simon. Manya, I'm hoping you can tell us what is this new trend? What are people doing? Well, people are going to uh, certain destinations to go stargazing. Now, can't you just go outside and look up at the sky or if, if you can't see it very well, get a telescope and well, look through the telescope? Well, but some places are just more impressive because of the, the climate and the, the environment. Okay. And so during the second part of our lesson yesterday, the writer traveled to this place. It was it was a special place mm. called a plateau, right? And it was a geographical feature. A plateau, of course, is a flat space up in the mountains. Uh, and so the reason that was so great for stargazing was because it was very high, it mm -hmm. was very dry, and so the air was very clear. And that ac actually, it happened to be the location of this very special place astronomical observatory called ELMA, right? Mm. And that actually stood for uh, Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array, mm -hmm. uh, a very fancy term for this big observatory where scientists from around the world can observe the sky. Now, it, you might think that this scientific observatory is just kind of a boring place. But we're going to find out today as we get into our first reading that that does not seem to be the case at all. This thing, astrotourism, is actually becoming a real kind of trend, a thing that people are actually doing in larger numbers. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So let's get into our first reading for today. Listeners, we're going to be looking at page 25 of your July Advanced Magazines. And in this first reading, we're actually just going to read through the left-hand column. So join us now in your magazines as we go through that together. The town is a tourist center with muted lighting and dirt streets lined with restaurants, souvenir shops, and tour operators offering desert adventures. It seems there was a stargazing operator on every block. Venturing into the dark. A late night, half hour bus ride took me out into the desert. After climbing out of the bus, I stopped in my tracks. It was so dark, I couldn't see the ground. But no one needed to point out the Milky Way. There it was, a vast streak composed of billions upon billions of stars, packed so close together, it seemed as though one blended into another. The Envoys of Beauty, Ralph Waldo Emerson, and Jewels of the Night, Henry David Thoreau, that made Vincent van Gogh paint masterpieces, were on display. About a dozen people on our tour spent the next hour sitting on wooden benches, 
while a guide pointed out the stars, constellations, and planets. Before it was over, each of us posed for a photo with the Milky Way as a backdrop, providing a nice souvenir. Okay, and so at the very beginning of this reading, they describe this tiny town. Now we learned actually yesterday that its name was San Pedro de Atacama,、uh, but this town it's become a full-blown tourist center.、Uh, but this is a little different than most tourist centers. When you think about a tourist center, Manya, what kinds of things do you usually think of?、Um, oh, I don't know, just. Like a gift shop, I guess. <laughs> nice, yeah, nice. Like that,、yeah. I'll tell you, I think of Las Vegas、oh, or like、oh, okay. Disney World or something like that, right?、Yeah. So it's like you have these bright, shiny neon lights, and、uh, you know, you might, I, I suppose, in a more Asian context, you might think of something like Hong Kong、yeah. or like、mm, uh, okay. you know Tokyo, something like that, where you see all these bright lights everywhere and like people bustling around.、Mm. The reason this is a little different. Is that all of these tourists are coming here to avoid the lights? So right,、yeah. in this first sentence, they say the town is a tourist center with muted lighting. Right now,、mm. when you mute something, what do you do with it, David? You basically turn it down, or even make it silent. If it's sound, usually mute is silent. But here, muted just means you've turned down the lights; they're a little softer. So very minimal light, very、mm-hmm. few lights in this town. It also describes the place as having dirt streets, but、uh, that doesn't seem too tourist spotty.、Mm-hmm. But then we continue on and hear that there are restaurants, souvenir shops—that's your gift shops, Manya—and tour operators offering desert adventures. Oh yeah. Okay, and in particular, these tour operators—they're not just offering desert adventures; they're offering stargazing adventures, right? And so it seems there was a stargazing operator on every block, meaning this has obviously become the big business for the town.、Mm-hmm. Okay, so our writer decides to take up these tour operators on their offer and to head out. Into the dark、mm. to experience the night sky. Tell us a little bit about that, Anya. Well, he said it was late at night. It was a half-hour bus ride, and it took him into the desert. Okay,、uh, and then after climbing off the bus, so basically they they just go out into the desert. Yeah.、Right? Yeah. Okay,、uh, and the writer stops, and they use this phrase here: "I stopped in my tracks." So, what exactly do、yeah. we mean when when someone stops in their tracks? When someone stops in their tracks, it means that something has interrupted their thoughts. You know, they were just going to go about and do something, but then, da da, I stopped in my tracks when I saw a snake on the sidewalk. Right? It's something suddenly stops you from what you were about to do. Okay. Now, when you so you're stopping very suddenly. The phrase itself, stopping in your tracks, it refers to Uh, the tracks you are making. Now we don't mean they're like something like train tracks.、Mm. We mean instead the the footprints that you leave behind you when you walk through something, right?、Mm-hmm. So if you're stopping in your tracks, it means you you stop and stop moving, and so you stop making tracks, like、mm-hmm. you've frozen in along the path you are walking along.、Mm. And so it's like you said, you've been very surprised, you've been interrupted by something, and so you've just totally frozen. Right, and so、yeah. why did the writer stop in her tracks? Well, it was so dark that she couldn't see the ground. Can you imagine how strange that would be? That is pretty strange. You know, like you're about to get out off of the bus, and then like, wait, where's the ground? It just looks like darkness everywhere. But what's what's really cool is that it's so dark that she couldn't see the ground. But no one needed to point out the Milky Way. Yeah, I I'm still a little stuck on this part. So dark you couldn't see the ground. You know, like、yeah. uh, I I I mentioned yesterday that in my hometown things can be very very quiet, and that can be kind of disorienting. Like it actually、mm-hmm. makes your ears kind of make a fake sound because it's too quiet. We say your ears are ringing,、yeah. right?、Uh, and this is an interesting idea. It being so dark that you can't see anything. But and then you said you could see the Milky Way. 
So, what exactly is this Milky Way? Is that a chocolate bar, Manya? We're talking about. Yes, here, or... <laughs> I'm kidding.、Ah, that is the name、joke. of a chocolate <laughs> bar, but that's not what we're talking so about. So, what is the Milky Way here? Well, the Milky Way is a vast streak of billions of stars. <laughs> okay,、yeah. you, usually we use this word "galaxy" when、mm-hmm. we're talking about、uh, the Milky Way, and I guess the idea is that. All of the planets that are going around our sun are part of a thing called a solar system,、mm-hmm. and there are all kinds of solar systems that are kind of grouped together into a big group of suns and planets called a galaxy. Right. And right. the Milky Way is the galaxy that we are in. That's the idea. So really,、mm-hmm. it's like you're looking up to see all of the stars. Around us, right, and those stars, of course, are like different suns. So this is the name of it, the Milky Way. There it was, the writer says, a vast streak composed of billions upon billions of stars packed so close together, it seemed as though one blended into another. So basically, what you're seeing here is more stars than the writer has probably ever seen before.、Mm-hmm. Right, we're kind of used to this idea of looking up at the sky and seeing a few stars. And sometimes, if we're out in the countryside and it's a dark night, we're like, "Wow, there's a lot of stars!" Or we say things like, "The stars are bright tonight." Yeah. But here, you're seeing so many that they look like they're blending all together. Now, how does the writer describe this experience, David? Well, he uses、uh, the words of some famous poets. One by a, a poet named Ralph Waldo Emerson, who's great. He calls it. They calls the stars the envoys of beauty. Uh, an envoy's here,、uh, and if you have someone who's an envoy, it means someone who brings you a message, like a messenger of some sort. And then、uh, it's another quote by Henry David Thoreau, who's also a great poet,、uh, who calls them the jewels of the night. Okay. Yeah. Good stuff. So those are two poets, and then we see a reference to a painter, right? Who is that, Manya? Vincent Van Gogh. Okay, and so basically, what they're saying here. Well, let me just read this again, and then we'll break it apart. The envoys of beauty and jewels of the night that made Vincent Van Gogh paint masterpieces were on display.、Mm. So basically, they're saying here, the beautiful stars were on display. Mm-hmm. Like you could see the beautiful stars, but the writer makes two quick comparisons. Instead of saying stars, they say the envoys of beauty, which is a quote from one poet, and the jewels of the night, which is a、mm-hmm. quote from a second poet. So these stars that made Vincent Van Gogh, the painter, paint masterpieces,、mm. were on display. Yeah, they're referring to one. And、they're probably referring to one particular painting by him, which is one of his most famous, which is called Starry Night, and it is like a basically a like a kind of a abstract, not really like realistic, but the the sense of the image is there, and it's like a a building, like a cathedral, and then like the, the sky just has these beautiful swirls of light. You've probably all seen this、uh, painting before. It's very, but it's called Starry Night, and it it's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. Now you will remember, listeners, that this is the second day of this lesson, and so if you are joining us for the first time today in this second part of the lesson, you won't necessarily be aware that yesterday in the lesson, in the first part of the lesson, they talked about how the the sky, the night sky, has traditionally inspired all of these different kinds of people, poets, artists.、Mm. Writers, scientists, different things, and so that's why the writer here is connecting、uh, her experience with the night sky to the kind of sky that inspired those people. That's、mm-hmm. really what she's trying to say here, right? The idea being that because the writer is a modern person, she hasn't had the experience to of of ex- of seeing the sky. In the way that it was when it inspired all of these people, and now, sort、mm. of for the first time out here, the writer can have this experience, and so she's invoking or using all of these different artistic terms because that experience that those people had is now kind of like her experience. It's kind、mm. of a a deep artistic reference. Yeah, I think the yeah. writer is making here.、Yeah. So, just something to be aware of.、Uh, and then the writer gets back to what happens on the tour. What do they do? 
Now they're out of the bus, Manya. They spend about an hour sitting there and looking at the stars. Okay, now this clearly is a tourist thing、mm-hmm. because they don't like throw themselves on the ground and stare up at the sky. They sit、yeah. on wooden benches, right? Yeah.、Mm-hmm. So they're at a site that has been prepared for tourists to come to. And sort of have this experience, right?、Uh, and more importantly, they're not really just staring at the stars, though. Of course, that is the whole idea of the thing. They mention here that there's kind of a guide, like a tour guide, who is providing them with some information. Specifically, the guide is pointing out stars because, of course, in English, many different stars have names, and in particular, groups of stars that are kind of called constellations.、Mm-hmm. Uh, we've traditionally sort of thought of them as looking like a picture, right? Like if you were to draw lines between the stars, and and so the idea is that this guide is pointing this out, like, oh, there is the Big Dipper, which、mm-hmm. of course is the famous one we talk about in the northern,、uh, the northern hemisphere of the world. That's the one that looks like kind of a drinking cup, yeah, yeah, right,、like、with a, a long handle,、right. the Big Dipper, and so that's an example of a constellation, and then of course different planets too,、uh, and then. They do something else. This is a very touristy thing to do. They all pose for pictures. <laughs> yeah. And what's in the background? Well, the Milky Way is the backdrop. So the Milky Way is behind them, and they get a picture with themselves, which is a nice keepsake or souvenir.、Mm. Good stuff. That brings us to our second reading, and we're going to have a look, listeners, at the right-hand column for that reading now. The next morning, I got a tour that was decidedly more scientific at Alma's operations support facility. An engineering marvel opened to the public Saturday and Sunday mornings. Admission is free, but it's best to make a reservation well in advance at almaobservatory.org/en. Perched six thousand feet above the operations facility. The radio telescopes aren't within view of the public, but people can see the data pouring into computers monitored by scientists. The facility has an extensive education program that can keep visitors entertained for hours. A growing tourism attraction, because most of us don't have access to clear skies like those in the Atacama, destinations offering dark sky experiences. Have become tourist attractions. It's part of a larger trend of so-called astro tourism, according to Levine. We are living in a new age of space awareness, he said. People are looking to the skies as never before. Okay, and so、uh, our story here in the second reading picks up basically after this tour、mm-hmm. that the writer was on, and this starts with what sounds like a more professional travel writer sort of tour, right? right. What does the writer do the next morning, David? Well, the next morning、uh, she's going to go to the、uh, Alma's operations support facility. And they're going to basically give her a tour.、Uh, they've opened some parts of it to the public on a Saturday and Sunday mornings, and they kind of take them around.、Uh, and admission is free, so if you're thinking of checking this out, hey, maybe that's a great time to go. Now they use a whole bunch of、um, terms in here. So they say, for example, the writer got a tour that was decidedly more scientific, meaning it was a lot more scientific. Now that、mm-hmm. might seem a little weird、uh, to you as a reader and a listener, because on the tour that the writer did the night before, you know, the tour guide was pointing out the different stars and the different constellations and things. We would generally think of those as the kinds of things you might learn in science class,、mm. but here we're going to a much deeper level. It's、right. a more scientific tour. And they describe this place as being an engineering marvel、yeah. that's open to the public. Now we got a little bit of a hint of that yesterday, David, when you were talking about how this is、uh, a radio observatory. Yeah, which is really cool. 
Yeah, and also very complicated. Also right? very complicated. Yeah, the point being that、uh, this isn't just an observatory where people are like looking through a telescope at the sky.、Mm-hmm. It's、uh, much more a facility where people are using sensors to sort of detect. Light and things that are there that we can't really see with our eyes because they're too limited. Right, right, right. And so this is a really high tech sort of place. Now we find out that basically anybody can do this tour,、mm-hmm. right? Because it tells us admission is free, so you don't have to pay to、Woo-hoo! do it. Right. It tells us it's open to the public Saturday and Sunday mornings, but it also seems like it's the sort of thing that's pretty popular because we're advised to make a reservation. Well, in advanced、uh-huh. at the website, right? So it might help to make a reservation.、Uh, now, this facility they called it the Alma Operation Support Facility. So that's a little different than the observatory, right. right? What? How is that different? Well, the observatory is where the instruments are that are looking at the stars, and the support, the operation support facility would be perhaps where that information is processed,、mm-hmm. or where they have all the equipment necessary to do repairs or any number of other things to help workshops, offices,、right. places maybe that、uh, scientists who are working there stay, different、mm-hmm. things. So it's kind of the bigger facility, right? That's maybe、right. built around the observatory part. So you're touring the whole facility. That's the idea. Yeah, and this. Thing is perched six thousand feet、What? above the operations facility. Now, when I say this thing, I don't mean the operations support facility.、Mm-hmm. We're talking about the actual observatory. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The radio telescopes themselves. So they're actually six thousand feet above the facility that the writer tours.、Mm-hmm. Right. And it says they aren't within view of the public. Now that doesn't just mean they're not open to the public. It also means you can't actually see them right, from right. this support facility. And again, they use that term radio telescopes, and that was a term that you mentioned yesterday, David.、Mm-hmm. Uh, do you want to just give a one sentence、uh, review of what they are? Absolutely. Oh, I'm so glad because I can't do it. <laughs> a radio telescope is. A telescope that enables you to see certain kinds of light that your normal eyes can't see. So you're seeing more stars, more galaxies, and the way that they behave together. Okay. Now, two sentences. Sorry. Why? Why are the two?、Uh, cheating. That's know, okay. Why do they put these radio telescopes six thousand feet above the rest of the facility?、Uh, the closer they are to space. The better the, the the more effective they will be. The better the view. The better the、right? view.、Right. So people can't get up there to that operations facility, but they are able to see the data pouring into computers monitored by scientists. So you're right, David. This is operations support facilities where they're keeping and analyzing the data, so you can see all of that stuff. It says the facility has an extensive education program that can keep visitors entertained for hours. So、mm. this is probably the big draw. If you're looking to learn about things that are going on, this is the place to do it. Now, Monia,、uh, our last section here tells us a little more about this kind of trend, this tourism trend. Tell us what what is this trend? Tell us about it. It's astro tourism. Okay. Now we talked about that yesterday. Okay. Like what this word means. Tell me one more time, just quickly. What is astro tourism? So it's、um, going to places that where you can. Oh, I'm not going to explain this. Oh, it's okay. I'll help you out. Okay, A- astro you. means <laughs>、yeah. space, right? Yes. So we、uh-huh. see that in things like、uh, astronaut was、mm. the example、mm-hmm. we used yesterday. That's a person who travels to space, right? So astro tourism. It's just tourism about space. Now. We don't say space tourism because that's actually a different thing. We yeah, didn't talk、yeah. about this yesterday, but in English, when we say space tourism, we mean tourists who are getting on a spaceship and flying up to space.、Mm. So、yeah. astro tourism, it's more like astronomy tourism, like、mm-hmm. looking at the star tourism.、Mm-hmm. And so that is this trend. And Manya, you said that、uh, people don't necessarily have a good chance to do this, right?、Mm-hmm. And so, what are they doing? Well, they're going out of their way to find、uh, places with dark skies, right? And they're going on these. What they're、uh, there are these places that offer dark sky experiences, and these have become a tourist attraction. And actually, there's a there are 
more and more of these. Apparently, there's some in North America as well. Yeah, I I actually know a guy who just traveled to really very far in the north of Canada to try to see the Northern Lights. Wow!、Mm. Went on like a two week tour, and you kind of stay up there, and they take you out, and you see Northern Lights. <laughs> I guess, <laughs> yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. It's a it's an interesting idea, and it makes me ask this question of like why. Like why? I understand you kind of、yeah. want to go see the night sky or something, but it seems to me that that's the sort of thing like, like it would be neat to do, but I probably wouldn't plan a trip around it. Right. You yeah, know. And、right. so I kind of wondered like, like why is this? What is the driving force? And they kind of get into that in their last paragraph. It's actually a quote there. It says, "We are living in a new age of space awareness. Yeah. People are looking to the skies as never before, and that." In particular, stood out as interesting to me that idea because one of the things that Josh Bickel and I have talked about、mm. during a number of these space articles on Advanced is this idea that space is no longer cool. So、yeah. even Josh and I are too young to remember when space was really cool. Oh, but there was a、yeah. time, you know, when it was like. They talk. They call it the space race when,、That's、like、true. Russia yeah, and the yeah, U.S.、Yeah. were competing to get to the moon and all of this、yeah. different kind of stuff. And it was like every kid wanted to work for. And I always say this wrong. NASA. Yeah, NASA. You know, NASA. NASA. You're right. The first time. NASA. I'm not American. It's not my fault. Yeah, it's okay. So <laughs> the, the point being, everybody wanted to work in the space business, and then、right. you know that trend kind of died. Like. You know, by the time the space shuttle was going up to space all the time, people、yeah. people didn't even pay any attention, right?、Yeah. Unless something terrible went wrong. Something.、Yeah. But it seems that 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 is starting to change again. And I know in、mm. particular that there are a lot more countries getting involved in space. China has a big space program now.、Mm -hmm. The European Union is getting involved, but there's also a lot of private companies. Yeah,、mm. I think that's the interesting thing now is that there are these private companies that are now sending their own. Vessels into space, and that's going to really change the way that the space race, this new space race, develops. The point being, this is、uh, kind of an area where we're hearing a lot more news, and it's a kind of an interesting growth area, I guess, in terms of industry and things we're aware of. And so, this astro tourism gives people who maybe are never going to go to space a chance to participate. In all of that excitement and that news that's surrounding these things, so seems like an interesting trend to me.、Uh, my experiences with the night sky, when they have been, you know, sort of special experiences, have definitely been great things that were worth doing. And so it's the kind of thing where if the place you live is not going to allow you to see the night sky in a way that gives you this experience, you might want to travel to do it. Sounds like an interesting idea. Yeah. Listeners, thank you so much for joining us for our July space article. We're looking forward to having you join us for another advanced studio classroom. But until then, I'm Simon. I'm David. And I'm Anya. Saying goodbye. Goodbye. goodbye.